Hi, my name is Aoife. I am a colour technician with Alpha Power from Milano, Ireland. And today we are going to do a tutorial on balayage effect using foil on a brunette model. We're going to cover um, teasy lights, baby lighting and root melting and how to fuse them all on one head. So this is our model for today. This is Sarah. So Sarah's hair history is that she has a natural root of maybe a level four. Um, we have a little bit of box dye in here because COVID and we have a history of a couple of highlights in here as well. So if I spin her around for you there. So we have a couple of hidden lights in here. Um, the expectation for today is actually that we possibly won't get lift past what these highlights are already at. But what we do want to do by the end of the day is create a little bit more dimension create a kind of a frame of brightness around her hair um, and start to push it in a little bit of texture into this hair because Sarah has kind of a natural fine texture. So if we were clever with this, we can create light and shade um, and a little bit of dimension to give her the appearance of more fullness and a little bit of texture in the hair. We are going to go back in and maybe erase some of these like regrowth patterns as well. So that'll be our root melt at the end. Um, so we'll, uh, we'll do a little bit of work on making that grow out nice and natural. So for our section and pattern, it's nothing too fussy, but I just want to clearly map out where I'm going just to be efficient and to make sure that we're hitting the biggest impact zones. So what I mean by that is if Sarah ties up her hair and chooses to see lightness here, I want to make sure that I fill this area. When it comes to the front, which is like our money piece and our face frame, Obviously, that's a big area. It's huge fashion right now. Um, and it's essentially the reason we call it a money piece is because that's what they pay for. That's what they kind of come to the salon for. It's 90% of their selfie. That's what people want to see now. So you need to give a bit of attention and detail to here. The other two zones are pretty much where we all lose time. So this is a big area and I've kind of clumped it all together here. But the reason for that is that I want to use a speed technique here where I don't give too much detail and too much time. If we approach this with a slightly different method, it means we can take this large section. This is where I'm gonna create most dimension. So I actually don't wanna to color too much, but I know if you waste all your time and your detail here, before you know it, your appointment is over and all this attention you gave to the back doesn't get seen. Your client never really gets the benefit of it. So this is one zone. And then we have taken her usual parting. Oops, if I can spin you and just tip your head forward for me. So this is just her regular pattern that she usually wears. And then we just kept these two triangles either side where we can kind of come through these guys and just put a few impactful um, lights in there. But they're not large sections because they're not meant to be the overwhelming look. The impact zones are visual areas. So front to back. Okay. So. This is kind of really simple. It's what everybody is, is doing right now. It tends to be, we baby light everybody. The difference here is I want to pay a little bit of attention to how fine her texture is um, and how to dodge these existing lights as well. Because we do want to see this. I'm probably going to root melt a lot of this off, but I do want to set up this like nice, neutral, natural base in there too. The first technique that I'm going to work with, it's something that everybody's quite familiar with anyway, which is basic baby lighting. Everybody has a different take on it. I'm not really here to tell you how thick or thin a baby light should be. I want you to let the texture of the hair dictate that. And to be honest with this one, we are going to root melt this out later on. So whether you choose to highlight it or do a very, very fine highlight, it's, it's totally up to you. The point is to make sure that in your consultation, you address the fact that she may tie this area up and expect to see lightness through it. If she doesn't, you can almost skip this section. In this case, I want to make sure that Sarah's ponytail always has a little bit of brightness in it. So what I'm looking to do is just pull out these baby fine hairs. I'm really conscious that the natural texture of Sarah's hair is quite fine. And also that in terms of hair condition and history, we know that there is a home color in here. There's pre-existing highlights. And there's actually some highlights that are maybe a couple of years old that are buried underneath a lot of this brunette. So we're being really, really conscious that we don't want anything uh, too aggressive going on here. And I want to remove some of these lighter areas. So if you can see this highlight that's embedded in here, I'm going to weave that out here because there's no point in addressing that with more lightness and it's already where it needs to be. 
So if I'll pick up my usual weave, but I might just go back and pull out those blondes that I think are just a little bit too delicate. And that's it. So it's a really razor fine little area. Don't forget that blonde that you've taken out is going to sit back in there. So don't worry about that gap. It is going to fill itself in when that blonde comes back. So we're using BB7 today. I've chosen 10 ball to start with because I do plan on kind of being here for a while while I talk you through this. So I'm going to go low and slow just to give myself the best chance in terms of condition here. I don't want to be racing this process at all. Um, but also Sarah has a naturally fine texture. So there's probably no need for excessive lift here. I'm aware that there is a box dye going on. If I need to open up the packet and top it up later on and apply a 20 ball in places where it's not lifting, I might do that, but I'm gonna see how it goes and kind of just play it out from here. Also bear in mind when it comes to baby lights, when your section is so thin, as long as your saturation is good, you'll find 10 ball will lift quite effectively. Um, I think a lot of people are going in with 20 ball and suffering breakage down the road or their lift is happening too soon, it's too quick, and you're rinsing packets off before the rest of the head is done. So if you compensate with your bleach or with your pre-lightener choice, you'll have a little bit of uh, consistent time and you'll be able to rinse it all off at the same time. So all I'm looking to do is stack maybe three of these packets back to back and then move on from this section. I don't really need any more detailing or attention into that. And this is kind of the emphasis on not wasting too much time on an area that won't be seen. So there's a nice kind of thick section of the previous weave. I'm going to drop that out just to avoid further damage. And we're going to go back over this later on with um, a bit of a root melt. So I'm really not too concerned about whether or not that's gappy because I'm going to blend anything that might potentially cause a problem out anyway. I'm not too concerned about how close these go to the root because I am working on a brunette. If I was working on a blonde and I wanted a to the root effect, I might be a little bit more tidy with them or I'll, um, I'll fuss a little harder to get them tight to the root, but this is not a full head of highlights. This is something that's meant to happen off root anyway. So I wouldn't be too fussed about having your close foils. This is kind of bad highlighting techniques are almost good balayage techniques. Um, so you have to kind of kill a lot of your habits that you're not allowed to use in highlighting. They come back into balayage quite well. So then I'm just going to repeat that on the other side so that we have kind of two to three foils stacked on top and then we'll return to this section. Okay, so we have three baby lights set in here on either side and that's just to set up our little ponytail section there. So now we're moving into this, which is kind of the more meaty part of the hair. So the technique we're going to use for this one is called a teasy light. Um, so it basically means that we take a chunky highlighted section or a chunky weave to highlight but what we're gonna do is back home into that section. What that does is it pushes some of the dark hair and the low light up towards the root. And that way you save that hair from getting bleached. But when it's all combed out, you get this um, infused low light inside the section. And that helps to blur your lines and create your blend and also give you depth and dimension throughout the, uh, the look. It's also a slightly faster technique when you're working through these thicker kind of areas. Um, so it'll just, it'll help you kind of progress through the head without getting too, um, too tangled up in all this area. So in terms of my section and pattern now, I'm going to start kind of creating this like straight V, straight V kind of setup. So you'll see as I go along. Basically what I do that for is just to create highlights coming from all different kind of sections so that the eye can never really follow where, um, where my line work is. So we wanna create something that looks um, quite random. You can also do zigzaggy sections if you like to weave all that out. I just like something that I can pick up at a later date and kind of follow if I wanna repeat the pattern. So the zigzag for me is just a little bit too random, um, but it is really, really effective. And if it's your habit, keep doing it, it's fine. Um, it's just not what I like to do as of now. So we've run into this like existing highlight here. So what I might do is skim that back off the top 
and try to find something that actually needs highlighting. So you can either go higher or lower on that. But just to be really conscious that we are not going to keep over processing hair that's already bleached. So this is kind of a triangle section. I'm going to just skim the bottom section off of it. What I have left is fairly thick, okay? It's too thick for a regular highlight. If you tried to do a highlight on that, you would have lines and bleeds and, and root work, and it's the kind of thing that you would have gotten in trouble for when you were training. Now we're going to work with it. So I'm again just going to weave out this section here that's already blonde. So I'm nearly going to skip that because my highlight exists here, and that's something that you need to learn to do when there's existing um, color in the hair is if it already has what you need, don't touch it. Don't over process it. Don't do any extra. So what I have left is this kind of section of hair. There's a few strands there, but I'll dodge them as I go along. So thinking about what's below and what's above, there is a highlight right beside this. So I don't need these sections of hair to be in this because those blondes are going to lay on top of each other. I want to come inside this section and pick up a fairly thick section, so a fairly thick weave. And I'm going to skip almost as much hair and pull out the next bit and pull out the next bit. Now, if you highlighted that in a full head of mesh, it'd be a redo. But in balayage, that works. So that's my first section I'm going to pull up. And then we're going to do the tease. So to get a good tease, if you're working up here, there's no broken hair, there's no layering, there's no kind of little sections you can pick up. So what I see all the time, people's problems with teasing is one, they can't get it in, and secondly, they can't get it out. So dealing with the first problem is if you're doing a gentle tease from here, all I've pushed is maybe 10 hairs here, and that's not really going to add into my dimension. It's not going to create the blend I'm looking for. So my tip for this is the hair you're holding is the hair you're going to highlight. So the further down that hair you go, the more you're going to find these layered sections. So if I pinch up here and I tease from there, from this mid band section, that's how much kind of gets infused in. And that's as much as my tease is going to help me. If I think I need more, I'll drop a little lower to where I can find some kind of natural shed and tapering off of the hair. And if I push from here, now I have much more of my tease up at the root. And if we look at this, it's no longer a chunky section. It's turned into almost a regular highlight. It's a little thicker, but that's OK, too. So the trick is hold it down a little bit lower if you need to find some of that, uh, those areas you need to tease. So I like to work with a board and a long foil. If you want to do this handheld, you totally can. I like the board because it gives me the opportunity to blend on the hair and it sits really nicely for me. So I'll just stick my foil over the board like that and I'll place the board in at her head. This is actually leaning against Sarah's skull. I'm not hurting her. It's just a little bit of tension so that this hair sits almost like a guitar string that it's like nice and tall. And that gives me the opportunity to blend on it later. So now we're getting into real blending. I'm going to pick up a bit of bleach on my brush. I don't want a sloppy brush, but there's plenty on this now. The first place I'm going to apply is mid band. And I'm going to almost clean my brush off on that. So I want to make sure that all that product comes off here and I start to clean my brush. Then because I'm pinching this down here, I have lots of tension still. And I've taken all these little broken baby hairs out of the way. So I'm going to start to flick up and run up the hair. And the gesture is, if you can see, if we can get a little bit close on that, it's a flicking motion. Now, don't be too flamboyant with it so that you end up hitting all this hair. Try to retain it. But it's from the wrist, flick up and off. And that's part of what creates our blend. 